Hey guys, Zach Mercer here, and this is my review of Troll Hunters Tales of Arcadia. Okay, so in this episode is, well, the pro pod, it's interesting, but, um, we'll get to that in a minute, but, uh, the episode is about, well, this is the episode where Jim first encounters Angorot directly for the first time, which is, which, and honestly, it's very, it's a very scary thing, and it's a very scary, and well, in very terrifying scene, but we'll get to that. But, uh, in, in, but in case, he, but in case, the episode, but in case, that's not really what the main majority of the episode is, although it is absolutely somewhat what it's about. But, uh, the episode actually opens up with an unseen, an, un an unnamed human racing around the, racing around the, uh, racing, just racing around the troll market. We do not know who this person is. We don't even get to see him clearly until a, f f a couple minutes, but what, what quickly becomes apparent is that he's stealing all of the very, uh, various clothes from around troll market. Um, which, uh, uh, and of course people start commenting, start commenting on it and pointing out that there's an intruder in their midst and, uh, and are curious as to how exactly the, a, 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 a human got in, and, and they call the troll hunter and uh, and and ask to call the troll hunter, and uh, of course, Drawl of course sees all of this, and uh, then proceeds to go off and go get the go off and go get Jim. At which point we find out that Jim is currently in the void between worlds with the, with the Council of Elder Troll Hunters, and uh, they're kind of somewhat upset with him. Um, because obviously, first and foremost, um, the, the, the first and foremost, a lot of the other spirits are upset with Jim over the fact that he went to get, that he went to go get the birthstone, um, and nearly put his friends into danger. And, uh, and of course, and of course they point and of course, Kandragar is the first, of course, the one main one we see, but, uh, he goes on to explain how, obviously, um, Jim, Jim, but that was a very, it was a very foolhardy thing he did to go after the birthstone. And, and also tells Jim that uh, that they did, that he shouldn't have done that he shouldn't really have gone after it and endangered his friends' lives. But uh, of course, Jim points out the obvious thing that uh, they said that there was no way to kill to kill Gunmar. So he points out that either they were that, that either they were lying or they were just generally bad at their jobs. Um, and or, and uh, and of course, and of course, is and of course, Kanjigari proceeds to go on to explain how uh, he was hoping that he was hoping that by dissuading him from actually going to seek out fairy tales that he wouldn't put his friends in danger and that he would be able to continue to protect the to protect the do his sworn duty i'm uh, pointing out that he's not going to do some fool that if he just goes off and do some foolhardy thing to rescue claire's brother that he's only going to put himself in danger um but uh of course he points out that, it's, that they also he they also said that uh he was been putting he, he would be putting his friends in danger by just having them involved in his ventures at all and which was we find out clearly not the case um as he points out, the very, the very, it's a very obvious thing that he has to kill the birthstone at all that he was able to do any of the things he was able to do. Um, and of course, he points out that the only reason he has it is because of his friend. So he points out that maybe they might be wrong in this case. But uh, of course, Kanjigar points out that this is just that he, that he thinks this is the whole full Aaron type thing. And he also points out that uh, that he, that if he, that if that a good troll hunter needs to learn to distance themselves. But. Uh, then he, but then he hears that his, but then he hears Draw calling from, from, to Jim from the waking world, and then proceeds to tell, and then proceeds to tell Jim what he's hearing, what he's learning, and, uh, you, and of course using his connection with, I guess, the Force in this particular instance, um, as a spirit, as a, as, you know, a spirit, he's connect, he uses his connection to the spirit worlds to, uh, kind of, to, kind to inform Jim about what's going on, about how there, about how there was a troll rule, is about how there's a strange human loose in troll market, and that, uh, Everybody's currently panicking because they don't know how to deal with it, and uh, of course this causes causes Jim to become confused because he points out that that his troll market is very secure and he's curious as to how the human even got in in the first place. But uh, of course, uh, but of course, Kanjigar points out that there's not really any time, and that he, and then dismiss, sends Jim back to go and deal with it. And of course, Jim then emerges from the void and immediately goes into troll market to discover that all of the troll that all of the trolls have just kind of since caught the human and have stuffed him in a, and have stuffed him in a burlap sack and are hanging him above the above the, all of their heads to keep him to keep him from escaping. And uh, of course, uh, Jim shows up and proceeds to to, to demand uh, just proceeds to demand authority of the situation and uh, tells them that as the troll hunter he will deal with it. So of course, the trolls proceed to let that to hoist the bag down and. Uh, and when they climb out, they find a human that uh, claims itself to be Blinky. And uh, 
And of course, they, and of course, he, and of course, Blinky, of course, then proceeds to, you know, the, or at least the human claiming to be Blinky proceeds to go on and, and claim how uh, he's all, how he's obviously very grateful for Jim for letting him out, and uh, and but uh, and also proceeds to kind of greet Jim like he's an old friend, which uh, of course confuses Jim because he obviously points out that there's no way he should know his name at all, and of course, our our game draw arrive on the scene as well, and our. And do point out that, and do point out that uh, that it seems that it seems very strange, and wonders if he's a changeling, since obviously he doesn't look like Blinky, and they're pretty convinced that he's lying. But uh, of course, it forces at this point where Blinky attempts to prove that he's actually Blinky by telling Jim a bunch of things that only he, that only Blinky would know. Obviously, you know about how about things about his mother and about things and, and about his father, you know, and about his father left when he was five, um, and. Uh, and also, and also about how they fixed the, the transmission on his Vespa last week, which, uh, of course, which, of course, uh, and, and, which, of course, uh, Jim, Jim doesn't initially, still doesn't believe him, because obviously he, point, he, he's, um, obviously he's convinced that a changeling could have easily spied on him and learned all of those things, but, uh, it's at this point where Blinky then proceeds to scold him for, you know, not helping a person in need, in, in person in need, and accusing them without any sort of evidence about what they actually are. And, uh, and of course, this is at this point where he, where when Jim hears that, he realizes that it actually is Blinky. And, uh, and of course, and of course, uh, and of course, this is at this point where they wonder what exactly happened to Blinky that caused him to turn into a human. And, uh, Blinky admits that he doesn't really know. He admits that, he admits that he just turned into a human. And, uh, and of course, point, and of course, Ark just kind of takes a moment to poke him pride at him, pointing out that he's squishy now. But, uh, of course, but of course, Blinky points out that there's only one troll who can help them and, and figure out what's going on, and that's Vendel. And, of course, they go to Vendel's workshop, which is revealed to be under the Hearthstone. But, uh, and Vendel gets a good, get, gets a good look at Blinky, and that concludes that he absolutely has no idea what could have caused this sort of transformation. Um, and of course, and of course, and of course, uh, Blinky points out that, uh, points out that that's not very particularly helpful and uh wonder and and uh and of course Blendle just kind of wonders what exactly what kind of situation that Blinky got himself into this time around and uh and of course Blinky then proceeds to recount what happened to him about how he went into God went into Gato's keep and uh and was digest and was digest and was di somewhat digested by Gato and uh and and concludes that he that he tried to escape the the got to his stomach and uh and of course Vendel becomes upset with with him because he wants it because he wants into Gato's keep uh, because obviously Gato is a very dangerous troll and has a very dangerous reputation so uh of course so of course Vendel points out that he really shouldn't have done that but uh of course uh, but of course uh but of course he keeps talking and uh, points out that uh he that he points out that it wasn't a particularly pleasant experience but uh he does point out that uh he, he, after after continuing to recount the events that happened from the previous episode, he concludes that what most likely happened was was that uh, the various potions he threw in trying to upset Gato's stomach um, is or likely what the culprit for, for what turned him into a human after thinking through it a bit. And uh, and of course Vendel is, and of course Vendel is obviously very upset about uh, obviously very upset about how they went into Gato's keep and uh, and of course and of course he points out that. Uh, and of course, he asks them what could have caused such a foolhardy decision. But uh, it's of course at this point where Jim steps up, and though although Blinky tries to shut him up and keep him from telling what really happened, he reveals that he went to go and get the birthstone, the birthstone for Gunmar, so that they can kill him and get to Claire's brother back. And uh, and of course, this causes Vendel to obviously be visibly angry, um, pointing out that uh, and po even remarking that uh, angry would be an improvement over what he is. Um, and of course, he points out that obviously the troll hunter's duty is to protect their kind and to protect the and protect the nature of the world, both worlds. And uh, and points out that they that, that he shouldn't be going off trying to trying to trying to follow off uh, unique fa little fairy little fairy tales that may or may not be true. But of course, he then proceeds to change his attitude completely when Jim is able to produce the birthstone. And uh, of course, after Vendel sees it, he realizes that the legends are actually true. And he realizes that, and he realizes that Jim wasn't lying, and that there is a way to actually kill Gunmar. And uh, and of course, realizing that there is, in fact, their second, tr their second, uh, that they, that they, that of course they need, to, that of course they, they're going to need both of the kill, both of the, uh, but all three of the stones to actually do a thing. Um, he does point out that he will, in fact, keep it for safekeeping, since it'll obviously be not well, not not really in safe hands if Jim is going off to go get more of them. So uh, he points out that the best way to do, the best way to keep them safe is to just hold on to it. And, uh, 
And of course, and of course, with that, um, Blinky then wonders what exactly, how exactly long his transformation into a human is actually going to last. And uh, of course, and of course, Vendel points out that he actually has no idea how long it's going to last. But uh, he does point out that that uh, Blinky that, that it could last days, it could last hours, it could last however long. But he does point out that that at this point, uh, Blinky has has two options. Um, he can either sit in the sit and troll and troll market and let Vendel study him and poke and prod at him and figure out all the differences between his his human body and his troll body, or Ven or Blinky could take full advantage of this of of the situation and finally go out and enjoy his day in the sun for however long it lasts. At which point he dismisses them and they go and they do go off on their merry way. And uh, and of course J and of course Jim is obviously. Jim, Jim obviously, Blinky doesn't obviously take excitement at the fact that he'll be able to come out, come out and enjoy the sun. But uh, it's all. But when they get ready to go and leave Troll Market, he's obviously very hesitant, and uh, for good reason. He's a troll. He's never been a human before. He's not entirely sure if he's going to turn to stone or not. So, uh, but of course, uh, Jim then proceeds to tell him that uh, then proceeds to tell him that it'll be all right, and that they can and that it, and that the sunlight's not going to hurt him. And then demonstrates the whole fact by, you know, stepping out into the sunlight himself and waving his arms around a little bit and just kind of dancing around in the sunbeams a little bit to show Blinky that it's okay. Um, and, uh, and, of course, Blinky is still very visibly nervous and Arg does accompany him. And uh, he does tell Arg that it's unfortunate that they won't be able to accompany him, that he won't be able to accompany him for the, for the journey he's about to go undergo. But, uh, but, but, of course, Arg just kind of silently reassures Blinky. And Blinky then proceeds to, you know, to, to, to take Jim's hand and step out into the sunlight. And, uh, of course, J Blinky is completely fine. He's obviously very excited about the fact that he gets to step out in the sun. But, uh, uh, and also, of course, is visibly excited because, uh, he gets to finally look at the sun. And, he, and, well, and of course, he winds up blinding himself because, as Jim points out, he's not supposed to stare directly at it. So, uh, yeah, he does a bunch of things that, for, that people who have never seen the sun before would do. You know, like a little kid. And that's kind of a fun, well, fun little thing about the episode. But uh, of course, Blinky then proceeds to run, run, run up, run up onto the bridge, onto the bridge above the canal, while Arg just kind of hollers a goodbye at them and then proceeds to walk back into Troll Market. And that's the last we see of him for the episode, unfortunately. But uh, of course, he, but of course, he then proceeds to run out onto the onto the bridge. And he walks. He accidentally walks down in the traffic in his, in his excitement, and uh, somebody throws a can at him. Of course, which uh, of course Blinky points out was very thoughtful of them because he did re require a snack. But uh, well, Jim Trim warns him too late that that's not that he's not going to be able to eat the can. And uh, of course, he Brent proceeds to take a bite of it and quickly discovers that that doesn't taste nearly as good as it used to when he was a troll. Um, at which point. Uh, at which point Jim then proceeds to take his hand and proceeds to lead him back to lead him back to Jim's house. So to kind of just keep him away, to just kind of keep him out of the traffic because he's obviously wandering around in it. And uh, and of course Blinky is visibly devouring all of all of Jim's foods, uh, all of Jim's snacks and other things, and all of the leftovers that he has in his in his house. And uh, admits that he doesn't usually care for human food, but he does point out that since he's become a human now, it is rather delicious to, for him. And. Uh, and of course, he asks Jim what they call it, and of course, Jim points out that it's just leftovers. Um, meanwhile, we find out that Droll has also come to Jim's house. Come to Jim's house in the meantime, and uh, and and also Nana Enrique is there, and uh, and 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 very points out that it's that this is kind of an amusing sight, and uh, and of course, Bl Blinky wonders who invited him, and uh, and of course, and of course, uh, Nana Enrique just points out that he was just bored and came over, pointing out that he can't just stay in his crib all the time. He does have to go out and socialize every once in a while. So. Uh, for that reason, he just decided to come and see Blinky turn himself into a hot fudge sundae, as he puts it, while uh, Blinky just kind of downs an entire can of, of, uh, of what is it, whipped, whipped cream. So, uh, and of course, it's at this point where, uh, and of course, it's at this point while Blinky is kind of taste testing all the various foods, um, draw, it's at this point where Drawl decides to come clean about something that he know, that he saw with between uh, Jim's, Jim's mom and uh, Strickler. And, uh, of course, Jim already knows about the whole situation, about how Strickler and his mo- Strickler kept brought his mother home the other night, and, uh, and, and of course, he understands that Drawl was most likely a first-person witness to that, but, uh, of course, and of course, at this point where Drawl points out that there was a bit more to that, um, and he easily goes on to fit, and he goes on to put it, the two of them smushed faces. Or, which, uh, of course causes Jim to react very strongly, obviously. Because, obviously, his worst enemy and his mother are ki are dating and kissing. He's not particularly comfortable with that. But, uh, 
And of course, and of course, and of course, Droll eventually does use the proper term for it because you know Jim taught him the proper term for it. Um, but uh, of course, he points out that uh, that he, that he's obviously that obviously Jim is upset. He he senses Jim is upset. And uh, does point out that he should have squashed squashed Strickler then and there, but uh, and while Jim points out that he should have done that, he also points out that that would be that he also realizes that would have been a bad idea because, as he points out, um, Strickler currently has bounced to his mother via a spell, and that would not work out very well for uh, for any of them. Um, and of course, because obviously that would mean that Strick that Strickler would accidentally that Strickler would be killed, which means Barbara would be killed, and we don't want and, and Jim doesn't want Barbara to be killed. So he points out that that he's glad that Droll, you know, restrained himself. And uh, but of course, and of course, Droll then proceeds to tell him that tell him that Strickler is just using it to get under his skin, and uh, and tells him that as long as he doesn't that as long as he doesn't let him, Strickler isn't going to win that. Um, and of course, taking that taking that to heart, um, Jim, Jim does thank Droll for the reassurance. But uh, it's at this point where Blinky, having eaten his entire body weight of, in food at this point, um, then notes that then notes that his st stomach seems to be rumbling. And uh, and of course, it's at this point where uh, where, where Nana Enrique points out that it's not his stomach, and that's uh, when he's and that's uh, when he's and that because he's eaten so much food, um, he, that means that his butt that his body is full to bursting, and now he's gas and now he has to go to the bathroom. And, uh, and of course, he really it quickly becomes apparent that Blinky quickly realizes that he has the runs, and immediately runs up to the bathroom upstairs, and uh, and and Lee and uh, proceeds to and proceeds to just kind of go go up and get, just relieve himself. And uh, and of course, there's this point where uh, where uh, where Jim is kind of just pointing out that that's obviously a that that obviously that, Blink, that he's curious if Blinky will be fine on his own. But uh, it's at this point where he hears a car door and realizes his mother his mom is home and. Uh, Tries to get everybody out of the house as quickly as possible. Droll, of course, returns to the basement because that's where he hangs out when he's not in Troll Market. Um, while Nana Enrique, who it should be noted, isn't supposed to be there, um, Jim kind of just shoves the baby in the freezer. It's, and that is about what... It, it's just a funny visual, but of course, Nana Enrique has to get... Has to just kind of climb into the freezer to hide... Climb, climb into the fridge to hide, although he admits he doesn't want to because it's full of leftovers. But, uh... Jim forces him in anyway, but then realizes that he forgot about Blinky, and sure enough, um, Blinky's mother, and if sure enough, um, Bl Blinky comes downstairs right as Jim's mom is entering the house, and, uh, and of course he admits, and of course he's, just, Blinky's just talking about himself about how, what fine facilities they have, and, uh, and of course, and, and of course he's saying that to no one in particular, mainly Jim, but, uh, then he discovers that Barbara's at the bottom of the stairs, and, uh, Da, and uh, and uh, Barbara insists that she uh, that she has a that she has an orange button Krav Maga and will not hesitate to attack him if she doesn't leave he doesn't leave her house in the next five seconds. And uh, while Blinky tries to defuse the situation, telling her that he means no harm, she then proceeds to immediately follow up with that. And uh, sure, sure enough, does kick him in all of his sensitive areas, which uh, of course causes him to go causes Blinky to just go down. And uh, and eventually, after getting Bl and eventually after Jim, you know, gets Nana Rinky into the freezer to hide, he immediately gra he immediately grabs on Blinky and tells Jim and tells her, his and tells Barbara that uh, she that he, that Blinky is with him. And uh, of course, he's visibly uh, uh, confused as to why there's a, as why there's a stranger and why Jim knows him. And, uh, and of course, he proceeds to introduce Blinky as Mr. Blinky. And uh, proceed. And of course, he's not entirely sure who he is. And uh, and of course, concludes that and concludes concludes that he must be from school. And that's uh, and, and wonders what Jim, what kind of sort of trouble Jim has gotten himself into now. But uh, of course, Blinky. Of course, um, it's at this point where Mr. Blinky. Then proceeds to tell to tell Barbara that he's actually in no in no trouble and that uh, he's actually come to to, to congratulate Jim on all the thing on all the things he's done and uh, and of course and of course this is this point where Jim just kind of plays it off as Blinky's got if that Blink Mr. Blinky is his guidance counselor and uh, and of course Barbara just kind of accepts that pointing and uh, with Jim just kind of pointing out that uh, that Mr. Tr Principal Str Mr. Strickler brought him in. And, uh, it is, of course, very visibly, and of course, is very visibly confused on pointing out that obviously he shouldn't have, he, that obviously he's a, a little confused as to why the guy in Scott is making a house call, but, uh, it's of course at this point where, uh, he's, where, 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 you know, Mr. Blinky then proceeds to bring, bring Barbara, uh, and of course, he also plays it off that he's, Hung that he's Hungarian and that it's pronounced blink hey. But he then proceeds to, to bring to bring Barbara aside and uh, proceeds to tell her all the problems that Jim has been going that Jim has been going through. Obviously about how the, about how he's gotten to know Jim very well and that's uh, he's and that Jim has obviously come to him with with a lot of his things and a lot of his concerns, and which of course all, is all good things that uh, Jim praises Blinky for. 
until he finds out that Blinky also brings up his father and about how Jim is kind of made, and, and which, uh, which, uh, which Barbara Kemp seems to, seems to think is, an ex is the reason why Jim has been lashing out lately, and about why he's been coming home, about why he hasn't, why he's been coming home late, why he's been lying, why he's been doing all these other things. And, uh, of course, Jim, and of course, she proceeds to point out that if Jim needs to talk to somebody, she, she, she could have just talked to her. But, uh, of course, Jim, but of course, Jim points out that, uh, that's why he wrote the letter. About, he didn't really know how to come to Barbara about what, about what was going on, so he just wrote her a letter and hoped she would read it and understand. And, uh, and of course, and of course, Barbara is, well, happy that Jim, his Jim has found somebody to talk to and is happy that he's, that he's, you know, finding an outlet for all of his stress and anxiety and all these other things. And that he's been talking to Dr. Blinky to, you know, Mr. Blinky to just kind of, well, to just get all of his anxiety out. And of course, and of course she then proceeds to, to kind of just, to, to kind of just, just stop, stop and ponder all the things Mr. Blinky told her. At which point Jim, Jim whispers to Blinky that, uh, he obviously does not understand why Bl he obviously points out that, uh, he doesn't, Jim doesn't really give a crap about his father, so he don't, he, he's curious as to why Blinky brought it up, and, uh, Blinky just responds that he does now. Um, at which point, at which point it's at, the, it's at this point where Toby and Claire then proceed to, run, to proceed to barge into Jim's house, and, uh, are obviously very visible, and obviously are, are, are remarked that they came as soon as they heard, and, uh, and obviously Jim is not, and obviously Jim has, they realize that, uh, that Dr. Lake is there, and, uh, so they then proceed to kind of play off the whole thing about how, every, about how, about what it is, and, uh, of course Toby is the least subtle at hiding what's going on, obviously he just kind of walks up and puts it, and walks up and just kind of Strokes Blinky's face because he's obviously never seen Blinky as a human foot before. While uh, well, well, Jim just kind of explains to them exactly what's happening about how how uh, is he's a guy about how he's their new guidance about the guidance counselor and that he was just introducing Mr. D Mr. Blinky to his to his mother. And uh, of course, while they're while they're having this conversation, um, Claire does in fact see see on um, not in, in the fridge and proceeds to pull him out of it and, and proceeds to kind of warm him up a little bit by putting pulling him into her arms. And uh, of course, and of course, Toby of course doesn't really play along all that well. He goes up, shakes Blinky's hand, and uh, and tells him that it's nice to meet, meet, meet him. Whereas whereas Claire's a lot more, you know, he a lot better at playing along, telling telling uh telling Mr. Blinky that yeah, it's nice to see him again. Um, and of course, and of course, it's the, with that, Barbara is satisfied about, about, about all the explanations, but is also visibly confused that Nanamike seemed to have just appeared out of nowhere, and is obviously in his baby form, of course, and, uh, and of course, and of course, they proceed to leave because they still got to, they still want to take, the, they still want to show, they still kind of got to get back to school and return Mr. Blanky to school, so they leave, um, and of course, Barbara tell, wishes them goodbye, but, uh, is then also visibly confused as to as to where not Enrique came from, and uh, and of course and of course she points out if, if Clarence was always holding the baby, and uh, and of course Claire, Jim just kind of gaslights her a little bit, telling her that no, he he uh, he was he asked for a ride to come there and and been and been just hanging out, and uh, then also points out that obviously that isn't what happened when in actuality that's exactly what happened, and then wishes her goodbye. I mean, at which point once the door once the front door is closed. Um, Claire then proceeds to throw her "quote unquote" baby brother into the bushes and tells Nan and Ricky to get home before some before their parents know that he's gone. And uh, of course, with that, Nan and Ricky takes his leave. Um, at which point, at which point, um, at which point they decide that uh, they they want that they want to that's uh, that's obviously that obviously they they Blinky is pointing out that they that they still have a little bit more time left in his day. And uh, he obviously wants to point out that there's still a lot more things left to do that he wants to do. So uh, for that reason, so that and uh, but points out that he still wants to drive an automobile. He still wants to go to other places, and he still wants to learn new things about what's going on. And uh, of course, and of course, he just wants to take out full advantage of the fact that he's a human. But uh, but uh, of course, Claire points out that there's only one perfect place left to go for, to end his day, and then proceeds to, to and then they do proceed to ju just kind of leave and get ready to take him to where he's going. Uh, meanwhile. And we do see a scene with Strickler and Otto, and uh, Otto, and Otto, and Otto, of course, comes into Strickler's office with, uh, of course, Mister, with, of course, Angle Rot in the corner. I mean, he's carving animus totems, and uh, and of course, and of course, Otto points up, comes to Strickler and points out some of his well concerns because he was sent by the Jan by the Janus Order and by extension the other changelings. And uh, he does point out that they're a bit concerned with 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 Strickler's leadership and how he's handling things, and. Uh, 
And of course, the Strickler, and of course, Strickler then proceeds to, because Frogwa is currently stroking his shoulders, Strickler then proceeds to grab, grab Frogwa and throw him at, at, at Otto, and tells him that they shouldn't really be questioning his leadership, and, uh, and also points out, and of course, also, but of course, Otto points out that obviously, that obviously there's a bit of a concern, mainly around Angorot, but, uh, of course, Strickler points out that uh, as long as he has Angor's ring on his finger, he is in complete control of Angorot, and there's not going to be any issues, but, uh, of course, but of course, anger then proceeds to muse that uh, may, that there, that there's no guarantee that ring will that that finger will rem continue to remain on his hand. So, uh, first, uh, and of course, which of course concerns both of them. But uh, they then proceed to get ready to. Uh, to then they, of course, at this point where Strickler then proceeds to point out that uh, obviously that obviously it's not going to be that big a deal. And uh, he does want to point out that it's not that's not uh, that he also has big plans for the Janus Order. And then proceeds to open his secret vault in the back of his office with you know his changing his changeling key. Still don't know how that works. Um, I would assume it's some sort of magic type thing, but uh. Considering, you know, that would be on the floor plan if it was, but uh, it is very unusual that it's just here. I don't fully understand how it works, but it, it, it exists. But uh, of course, he then proceeds to bring the group over, he then proceeds to bring Otto and Fragua into, into his office, and proceeds to show them a map of all of the changelings that he's, repla that he's replaced and swapped people out with, pointing out that the Janus Order is going and is growing, and that they currently, and that's not, and that they currently have. People in high positions of power, politicians, um, billionaires, those kinds of things. He points out that the Janus Order's size and number is growing, and that uh, as long as he and as long as they continue making new members, they will eventually be able to rule the world without anybody even really realizing it. And uh, and of course, he does proceed to point out that uh, that because Gunmar is currently locked in the Darklands, that there is in fact a vacant seat where they need to go to actually, you know, open up the throne, open up the open up their throne and take over. And uh, Otto then proceeds to nervously wonder who's go who's prepared to take over that seat. But uh, of course, it's at this point where Strickler just responds by jamming a knife into the map and proceeding to to walk out of the office. And uh, it's very it's very heavily implied that he that he wants to be the one ruling it all. So, uh, but uh, of course, it's at this point where. Uh, Otto walk out. Otto walks. Otto Strickler walk out, and they physically see see um Angor Rod ripping off a chunk of his own body to make his animus totems, and uh, that's how we find out what it what they do. They're supposed to. He rips them off of his own body and uses the and uses them to make animus totems, and uh, of course Otto is visibly confused because obviously he points out that that, that uh, Angor just ripped off a part of his own flesh and points out that that had to have been painful. But uh, of course, Otto points out that uh, he that, uh, points out that it's but Angor points out that it's better than him ripping off a part of Otto's, and uh, does wonder what. And, and of course, Otto then proceeds to wonder aloud what the totems are for. Obviously, very visibly nervous because obviously Angor is making a couple of them at this at this point. But uh, he does point out that uh, he has plans to he has plans to test the troll to test the troll hunter and uh, and make preparations to move in on him. And uh, for that reason. He needs a couple of animus totems to, you know, to, to deal with his fr to deal with his friends. Um, at which point we then see, at which point we then see, um, Claire bring Blinky up into a, up into a hill, which uh, with Toby complaining obviously about how much exercise they've been doing, um, and uh, pointing out that they were supposed to go somewhere cool. But uh, of course, they then proceed to point out that uh, obviously they that obviously he points that that obviously this is the this is one of the coolest things in the world, and uh, they do bring him up onto a. Bit of a filthy little park looking park. And uh, of course, he's visibly confused as to what he's looking as to what he's looking at until until Blink until uh until Claire then proceeds to point him in the direction of where he's supposed to be going. And uh of where he's supposed to be looking. And of course what we find out is that uh this is Blinky's first time seeing the sunset because he has never actually been out at out of during the day before. So for that reason, he is very visibly awestruck by the by the by the sunset and uh and does proceed to and does proceed to almost walk off the cliff until Jim catches him. And uh, does point out that's entirely that's highly breathtaking, and he's very happy to have been able to see it. But uh, of course, what and of course does thank Jim for his day for his for his day out, and uh, he'll never forget it. And uh, all, points out that he only wishes that Ark would have been there to join him on his journey, and that he'll tell him everything he saw on his first day. But uh, he also points out that there's still a lot more than he needs to learn about being human. And uh, Blink, and at which point Jim then proceeds to reassure him, telling him that this time around he'll be the one teaching Blinky instead of instead of the usual. Um, but of course, while they're doing that, um, 
They then proceed to, but of course, while they're doing that, they then proceed to the Angor, Angor, unbeknownst to any of them, proceeds to take out, proceeds to take a a animus totem and places several of them in the dumpster. And uh, and of course, and of course, well, he places one of them in the dumpster specifically, but we'll get to that. But uh, of course, at this point, where uh, they proceed to sit, they then proceed, um, Blinky, uh, where it's at this point where uh, Claire and Claire and Jim, they proceed to have a bit of a moment where uh, they sit down. And, uh, and, and of course, Jim asks Claire how he, how she knows about this place, and, uh, she points out that, uh, Logan brought her to bring, to ask her to the Spring Flame. And, uh, and of course, Jim is obviously very visibly nervous about that, pointing out that, obviously, that obviously he's wondering if she actually said yes, but, uh, she points out that he was, she was waiting for someone else to ask her, and heavily implies that she means Jim. And, uh, of course, Jim is obviously very visibly nervous, and doesn't really know how to respond to that. And, uh, that in turn makes Claire incredibly nervous because she realizes she put him on the spot. And, uh, after a bit of awkward fidgeting between the two of them, um, Claire, just, Claire notices all the, all the filthy bottles that are lying around and decides to pick some of them up and throw them in, into the, into the dumpster. And uh, where they're supposed to be. And, uh, and of course, Claire, and of course, Jim is obviously, Jim obviously is, is angry because he didn't really shoot his shot there. Um, but well, as, uh, Blinky then proceed, well, uh, Blink, well, as Blinky and Toby then proceed to scold him with, and, uh, point out that he definitely blew it, point, with, uh, Toby pointing out that's obviously, Claire wanted to, uh, wanted him to ask, to ask her to the dance, and to, to ask her to spring fling, and he didn't say anything, he just kind of sat there awkwardly, and, uh, and of course, and of course, Jim points out that he was just so nervous and he didn't really know what to say, but, uh, of course, uh, of course, as he, as he's kind of talking with Blinky, we then see a golem made of glass emerge from the dumpster, and uh, and of course Jim is very is, is of course Jim immediately summons his armor, but uh, also points out that while that uh, and of course Toby is obviously very visibly confused, pointing out that he said that, that the golem was made out of mud, but uh, obviously obviously we find out that the golems can be well, and this is that's kind of how golems work in other sources of fiction, so it makes sense it works here, but. Uh, Obviously, the thing is, golems are not one size fits all. They obviously all look the same in, sh in terms of body shape, but uh, obviously they can be made out of any material that's nearby. In this case, glass bottles, which uh, and of course, Jim, and of course, to, and of course, uh, it's at this point where Blinky points out that they should stand back and they're no use for the stone thing, for the stone hands of justice, and uh, he immediately runs in to punch it. Then he remembers he's human and realizes he cut his hand on the, is cut his hand on the on the uh, golem. And uh, does point out that that was a very startling reminder of that he's human now. Um, but uh, of course, Jim points out that they definitely need to just flank it, and pointing out that there's four of them and only one golem. But uh, then that completely derails itself when he realizes that, that that two more golems have emerged, and they quickly realize that they need to figure out what to do. And uh, and of course, Jim tells them that they need to that they need to find the animus totem since that was how they how they defeated the golems in the first place. And. Uh, and of course, Blinky. And of course, Blinky does recognize that gen the animus totems. Since at this point, the only person who's called them animus totems is Angorot. And uh, he obviously he's pointing out that they're animus to that what they are. They're animus totems. But uh, of course, but of course, Blinky points out that they'll need to definitely find them. Find them. And uh, and of course, they then proceed to figure out that the golems, because they're made of glass, are very vulnerable to rocks. And that winds up being their main weapon to fight against them. Just hitting them with rocks to break off parts of their body. Um, and of course, there's a, this also results in a very humorous scene where Toby tries to pick up a rock and tries to pick up a large boulder and throw it at him, but realizes it sounded looked a lot cooler in his head than he thought that it actually wound up being. So he winds up stopping to do that and starts picking up little rocks to throw at it. Um, meanwhile, Jim points out that they're going to need to figure need to hit them hard and fast to get to the animus totems inside the golem. And uh, does point out that they'll need to hit them with however hard they can. But uh, of course, as they're fighting the go the golems, um, Jim no notices Anger Rot, who then proceeds to leave the scene. And uh, quickly realizing that Anger is getting away, he then proceeds to call to call to his friends. But uh, quick and but is also nervous about leaving his friends behind, since obviously there's three golems. But uh, then he sees Clark kill one and concludes that, that that's most likely going to be fine. So he goes off to go go and confront Anger Rot alone, which is a bad idea. Um, and of course, there's a little bit of a side scene of, of during this part where, uh, of course, Toby, where Toby and Claire then proceed to beat, or to beat the other roommate, to lock one of the remaining golems in a dumpster and proceed to ram it into, ram it into the third golem to just to, to kill it and destroy it. But, uh, then the first golem winds up escaping. So it winds up chasing after them. Um, but, uh, meanwhile, Jim is chases after Anger Rot, um, tries to keep up with them and eventually gets caught in a stasis trap. Which, uh, of course, and of course, this winds up being a very dark-ish scene where, uh, 
Jim can't really move or speak or do anything. Um, and uh, Angoroth then proceeds to take this opportunity to gloat with him, to gloat at him, and toy with him. And uh, of course, he then proceeds to use his shadow stuff to get closer with, to get closer to Jim, and uh, tells Jim that he's never really hunted a human troll hunter before, but uh, he does relish uh, how what a rare game it is. Um, and uh, and of course, he then proceeds to tell Jim that he is Angoroth, and that uh, he is the, and that he has come to that he that he has killed that he has been the one responsible for consuming this for consuming the souls of uh, so many troll hunters before him. And uh, then proceeds to and then proceeds to summon a mark on Jim's face, which we eventually find out is called the Mark of Anger Rot, which you know is pretty on on point. But uh, he then proceeds to place a mark on Jim's face, and then proceeds to create a, and then proceeds to cr to create a sigil and do a magic little dance as he uses his, as he uses his magic to kind of seal to kind of seal Jim's powers a little bit. Um, and uh, and of course when uh, when of course once he, when he re after once he's done. Um, he points out that he's not going to kill Jim, not just yet, and that he's going to savor their little hunt. Um, but, uh, does tell Jim that next time they meet, Daylight will be his to command. And then he proceeds to use his Shadow Staff to just kind of portal his way out of there. Mean and that when, meanwhile, they realize that Jim is currently... So the, the, his, Jim's friends are currently running away from the golem, and they quickly realize that Jim has been trapped. And uh, and, tell, and and Blinky tells them not to touch the stones. At which point he does a he does a flying tackle into Jim to get him to get him out of the trap. And uh, and of course they do point out and of course they point out that they're happy he's safe, but also points out the golem that is coming. Um, at which point Jim effortlessly effortlessly kills it with his sword. But uh, at which point after after the dust is settled and they've defeated the and they defeat the final golem. Um, it's at this point where uh, they were, where Blinky then finally realizes that the golems were actually a diversion meant to distract all of them and, uh, and isolate Jim, and uh, and of course does notice the mark on, on Jim's face, and uh, does note that Jim and does note that Jim seems to have been marked for a fate worse than death, and that's where the episode ends. So yeah, obviously this is where Anger Rot and Jim formally meet. Um, but also, we find out a bit more about Strickler's plans, which is that he plans to kind of take over the world seamlessly using using changelings. That seems to be that's that's his end goal. He wants to do that, um, but obviously that's not go how it's going to play out because uh, obviously there's a couple of there's there's going to be a couple of wrinkles in there. Um, and this this kind of, this season is kind of where 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 um, Strickler's you know redemption arc kind of starts. I'll, I'll openly admit that and. Uh, Anger Rot, Anger Rot plays a large part in that, so I will get to that. But uh, um, yeah, he's it's not going to obviously work out for him in the long term. I will admit that like he's not going to be a major villain going into the rest of the series. But uh, I, I will admit that he does eventually redeem himself. But uh, you know, he does have plans. He does have plans to take over the Janus Order and use the Janus Order to just kind of create an empire for himself. That is his plan and what he plans to do. But uh, the quite, that's obviously not going to work. But obviously... The big thing here is that Jim has, Blinky has turned into a human, and that is a thing for the next several episodes of this. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be a recurring plot point. But uh, also, of course, also of course, uh, as we find, uh, um, Vendel obviously knows now that they're hunting the the birth, the, the bloodstone, the the uh, life stone, the triumphant stones that can that enable them to kill Gunmar. Which, uh, of course, is going to be obvious a thing, and that, obviously, there's two more of them, so they're going to be doing that going into the rest of the season, but, uh, of course, there's obviously the problem with Anger Rot now, which is that, uh, he claimed that Daylight would be his to command, and we will eventually see that quite literally. We'll eventually see what he means by that, but, uh, yeah, of course, for the time, but, of course, uh, for the time being, for, of course, for the time being, that is, in fact, going to do it for my review of Troll Hunters. um, but, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter in the description below. Um, be sure to check out my Patreon in the description below as well. It's only a couple bucks a month. It does really help me out. And you guys get access to a bunch of cool perks down in my way of saying thanks. So be sure to check those out. Link is down in the description. Um, and also be sure to go and check out my Twitch. Uh, my stream Saturdays and Sundays. Please go check those out. Um, go and check out my Discord if you haven't. Um, obviously, I've already, I think I've already talked about it. But please, just go check it out. Because I like hanging out with people and talking with them over there. Um, and uh, finally, if you want to see more content from me, then be sure to check out the videos linked in the end screen. The top video is the most recent video. It may or may not be this video. Whereas the bottom video is the video recommended to you based on what you've already seen from me. So if you want to try something new or see more of what you like, then be sure to check both of those videos out. But uh, in any case, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!